I'm going to show you how to get started with Softer. This is for the complete beginner. We'll go through the key features, the pricing, and how you can use this for your idea or your business. First of all, what is Softer? Softer is a platform where you can create custom apps for your business or idea. If you're trying to create a client portal, a marketplace, internal tools, you name it, you can do this with Softer. For more details on the exact features that it has, I would look at the products section, the tab right there, and this allows you to first see the different things that you can do. For example, the interface builder, what you can do, what it looks like. So this allows you to build things almost like Lego or a drag and drop if you've built different websites. You can take a, just a few moments where you can build it with very specific blocks that are wonderful. Looks great. They're optimized for whatever platform you're using it. Or if you're doing like mobile, tablet, desktop, it allows you to do this. And they just keep building better and better blocks for you to build quicker. Also, depending on what kind of database you're using, that allows your application to start. You can use Airtable, Google Sheets, and now SmartSuite, which really allows you to make your application smarter and for you to be able to display your data in a great way. Next up, the workflow automation. This really has to do with if you're trying to have a lot of uh, eliminating a lot of manual work, you can have automations right there. And if you need to have different permissions because you have different tiers based on your own business, or if you're using this as a platform to sell your micro SaaS, which is a like software as a service or a micro SaaS, you could be doing that as well. You can also take payments and have integrations with zapier or make or other things like that you can do so much and also what i like about this right here for softer is it's made with softer this site is actually made with its own thing so if you like the functionality and what it's doing you can just see how much that they believe in the product and they're building using this as well let's take a look at also one of my favorite features that they have which is the app generator if you're stuck in your own head of thinking about like what should i build this allows you to go from prompt to reality you can build in just a few moments your own application or custom app just by simply putting in the text and then going from there i also talked about um the ai and all the things right there as well great stuff we're gonna dive into that and actually show you how you can get started very quickly with softer. But to just let you know, it, it's it's just a game changer. One of my favorite features and ones that struggle and have a lot of, they're feeling overwhelmed of how to approach no code or what will they need. That's one of the key features that I like. Let's take a look at the pricing here. There are a couple different options. It starts for free and then it goes all all the way to the business class as well. If we start looking at the free option first, this allows you to get started very quickly. You can have unlimited uh, app visitors. You could have five internal and 100 external app users. Okay, so what does this mean? This really depends on the type of business or the type of use case that you have for software. A lot of people might say, well, this isn't enough. I want to scale to a million different people. Well, where are you right now? Where, where, what are you starting with? This is really important because maybe this is a great starting point and then being able to scale and switch platforms or the pricing might make sense depending on how much you're charging your users or how much your business or your enterprise or startup is paying for this, right? So if you're creating an internal application and this has all of the features that you need to manage an internal tool, how much is that worth to the business? Then if we're looking at pricing, it doesn't really matter as you're scaling. I just say that because I see a lot in the comment section, they're like, whoa, this is too little. I need more. Where are you right now? Are you making any money? Do you have any users? It's important to consider that. Next, we look at five work workspace collaborators. So you can have a small team. You can have one custom domain. I really like that. And that starts for free. A lot of paid uh, tiers, you have to, to get a custom domain. You have to go into paid softer you start for free which i really like basic you can use custom css and uh and uh, what was that javascript yeah j js 
That was Jay saw him for a second, but JS, yeah, so JavaScript, what does that mean? That means if you're going to be bringing in custom code or you want to have very specific, like, like functionality that you need CSS or, or JavaScript, you can be doing that. You could have 10 internal and a thousand external app users. You can embed software apps and option to buy extra custom domains. That's at 49. The professional, now you can have charts, calendars, inbox, uh, Kanban. So a lot of different views, especially if I was doing internal tools, I can have 50 internal, 5,000 X, external app users, 10 workspace collaborators, and you can remove software branding for 139. And then at the business level, org chart, timeline, SMS, login, one, 100 internal, uh, 10,000 external app users, 15 collaborators, and you can download the mobile app. So you can have downloadable PWAs, mobile apps. Okay, so the business, if you're going to have a progressive web app, it's going to be 269 a month. Now, that might be a deal breaker for some, but it really depends on what you're going to be using your application for, what kind of business you're going to try to create, and go from there. Let me know in the comments section down below. Are you creating your application for your own local business? Are you creating your next side hustle or minimal viable product? Let me know. Okay, now that we have seen the pricing and the key features, let's get started. So how can I begin? Well, you can start for free. And what I would do is I would take advantage of their AI gen. So let's go over here to product. Let's go to the AI app generator and let's get started. Okay, so we're here and we're going to be using a text prompt. So if you're familiar using like ChatGPT or other other um, AI prompts or platforms to be able to prompt, we're gonna be using this. Now, it mentions we have a couple different options. Choose the app type to generate. It says client portal, directory. I'm gonna pick more of a directory, but I'm going to say I need to create a marketplace to buy let's see to buy let's see like i don't know toys i'll say that or something okay so i did a directory because i wanted to go in that direction or that's what i'm thinking i think it's kind of a directory that's what i'm thinking in my mind so i'm going to say preview your app and then here it's saying your app is nearly done so it's giving me some kind of a mock-up kind of okay i like what it looks like i'm gonna say maybe i want it to be more modern all right so it's changed it a little bit i don't like the green i'm gonna make it more dark blue so i'm getting some kind of changes right there um now i can say generate your app or try another prompt but i think this is a good starting point so i'm gonna say generate your app so it's setting up the work space it's thinking about its life building the app's foundation, and then it says your app is ready. See it in action. And we're doing this in real time, so you see that how fast it's working. So it says to toy market. Okay, let's see what it looks like. So now right here, okay, cool. So they, I said toys, right? So it's already pulling the images. It says discover the perfect toy. Explore a wide range of toys for all ages. Shop now, right? And then it says toy marketplace. So here we can see like name, fun toys, description. And now I'll be able to see some of the details. Okay, so the pricing, where they can get it, all that stuff. So again, it just created this marketplace very quickly. I can say, click here for a toy marketplace. What will it do? Okay, add new toy marketplace. So this is great, seller. And that's actually what I want. I would want a seller to be able to do that. Um, and then I can, again, I'm thinking about for my MVP, my minimal viable product, I would have, I just want more people to add their listings and then I'll figure out how to charge or take a percentage off of every sale. But right now I'm going to just get more people. What I would probably do is, as I'm thinking about this, is probably just have a subscription where I'd set up for either buyers or sellers paying a monthly flat rate, be their list unlimited amount of their toys to get sales or if it's a curated marketplace, I might charge the buyers to have a curated place where they can buy from my curated sellers, something like that, right? 
So I'm going to have this. I like this. I'm going to customize app. And then now I'm going to be able to change some things, but it's already set up all of the major things for me right here, right? So on the left side, we have the different pages that it's already created for me. You see that's a homepage, a market, a toy marketplace details page, and a form page. So it gives me the basics that I need. I can either navigate to different pages if I want to, like I'm going to the form page that's already created for me, or I can also add a new page. I'm going to go back to the home page for a second. Once it does that, I can look at the theme. So I can look at the theme of the overall application. I can look at the text size, heading fonts, the weights. I can change basically the look and feel of the branding, I would say. Okay. Then I can look at the users. So sync with a database. So sync your users with a data source. Add users with either side with side and use additional user fields to create user okay groups. Okay, so it's gonna say sync. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a second. And then the settings. So I have general here, custom domains, data sources. What am I gonna use? Integrations. So am I gonna use like crisp for like messaging? Facebook Pixel for tracking, Google Analytics, the list goes on and on. And I also have OpenAI as well. That's interesting. I can have the mobile app. Again, I can enable that if I'm, you know, I'm under the business plan. SEO, so I can have search optimization, so I can scale that. User notifications. Okay. App history. Okay. And then I have some configuration if I'm going to be doing um, enterprise options as well. So I have a couple of these different things, but let's see if I want to sync uh, data real quick. Now, this is great because where would you like to store your app data? Okay, so this is important because if we have an application, we need something to, uh, to save it with. We need it to connect so the application can be smart. It's going to save it somewhere. So I have Google right here. It says, uh, in the next step, please give software both Google Drive and Google Sheets permission. This will allow it to, again, build out the database for me. So I'm going to continue. It's going to ask me what account I want to use. So I'm going to go and pick a, an account right now. I'm going to say yes. I'm allowing those things. And again, read over all the things that it's asking you to connect and why. Oh, this is why it's failed. Um, <laughs> Also, too, when you have multiple Gmail accounts and you're trying to be in multiple accounts, sometimes you have problems with that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's just navigate back to home. Let's go and add some other things right now or explore how to use this. If we see where the plus sign is right here, we can add a different block. Now, the blocks, again, they're all, all different types of blocks that we want. We can have dynamic. So dynamic blocks where things are going to be changing, right? And then we also have static blocks where those are going to be the information that doesn't change and different things that we might want to have, like a header or different things that you would find on most websites. So think about this. If you want to display dynamic information, for example, lists of things that are going to change over time, you're going to be posting a dynamic block, such as a table or something like that. If you want to have more things that will be able to feature things that do not change over time. Think about just like website information. Then you can use static information as well. And what I mean by website information, some website information changes over time, but say for instance, you're showing a pricing, uh, pricing tier or something like that. It's not going to dynamic. Next up, after we look at the blocks and what we're going to be using, we can also preview what it's going to look like on different devices. We can look at desktop, we can switch over to tablet, and then also mobile. This will allow us to, again, gain what do we need to add for these different views and also uh, just customizing to make sure that it's the right look and feel that we have. We can see that all changes are saved right there. We can preview this as well, where it's allowing us to get a shareable link and really, again, preview what it looks like. 
And what I like about this is it's a non-logged in user, and then you can also switch different ones. Um, now it says your application doesn't have registered users yet, so you're not gonna be able to switch. What does it look like for registered users, right? And so that would be one of the changes when we connect the database together. Also, it says you have unpublished changes. We can go here and we can publish the application if we want to by clicking publish. And there you go. You have just published your first software application. From there, you're going to be able to get a um, URL and you can make it custom if you want, even under the free plan. But we have this right here. We have the look and feel and we have the information populating from the marketplace as well. This is the first step. Now, like I mentioned before, we were talking about like how we could add users or have a sign in, sign out. This really requires you to be able to go to users and be able to sync with the data source. Remember, like I said earlier, sometimes if you have multiple accounts open, it will cause a conflict, but make sure that you pick a browser where you're signed in all with one account. And that way you're gonna be able to continue to copy over the data. And then it's going to be able to create that into your account. Remember, if you have multiple Gmail accounts, sometimes there'll be an error. But you notice right here, after I already connected my application and I'm only signed into one Gmail account, I'm not getting the user error. So that's sometimes people will be like, oh, it's not working for me or I messed it up. Just sign out or create a different profile. And when you're creating applications, make sure that everything is all under one account, they all sync one Gmail account, you signed up with software, the same Gmail account, so you can go into Google Sheets and Google Drive to give the permissions. In the comment section down below, let me know, what are you planning to build? Are you gonna use the AI generator or are you gonna use one of the templates? Are you gonna start from scratch? And if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. We do this every single week. If you wanna see more about software and AI gen, there's gonna be a video right here or down below to get started right now.